Delta Airlines is now dealing with the fallout after saying it would use AI to set more of its ticket prices. The company said it would use the software uh, from AI company Fetcher for 20% of its network by the end of this year. However, it said it is not based on personal information, saying there is no fair product Delta has ever used is testing or plans to use that targets customers with individualized offer. So what are they doing? How does it work in this, in this technology? And indeed in the US, some lawmakers are raising uh, legitimate concerns as well. Uh, Nabil Siddiqui is the founder and CEO of Price Perfect AI. He joins me now. Good to see you, sir. Um, so what are they doing? They, they're adamant it's not individual, but we already know about dynamic ticket pricing. So what element, what additional element does this AI add? Yes, so it, uh, thanks for having me. Um, so it essentially adds a couple of different things, right? Um, it's adding information that traditionally isn't included in ticketing prices. So airlines have traditionally had a long history of pricing starting from the 80s. And most of their focus has been on the demand so, um, and on the supply, right? So the supply is that seats are right. flying. So when an airplane takes off, the seats are kind of worthless once the flight right. uh, has taken off and they're not filled. So they're trying to fill that demand, and that's been the traditional way. Now what they're adding and the new things that they're adding uh, are things like, is there a new event happening? Let's say there's a flight from New York to Boston. And if there's a conference or some large right. event that's but, happening in Boston, those, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but a lot of that's already done up to a point. Um, you know, the, the schedulers and, the, and the, the route managers do know that. that exactly. How are they in planning to enhance this with more AI? So they will make it predictive. So r right now what's happening is it's reactive. So again, like the New York to Boston flight, as it's filling up, the flight ticket prices will start ticking up. But now that it's predictive, they know that maybe at this time of the year, um, these, you know, these kind of conferences are happening, they'll start picking the prices up earlier so that nearly everybody has to pay a higher price. And this can go the other way as well, right? So it could be a cheaper price, for example, if they know that New York to Miami flights are not, you know, selling at a certain point of the year, they can actually reduce those prices before they end up having to react from a demand. So it's more proactive rather than reactive. Do you see this as a, if you will, stepping stone to the individual price or geolocating. Look, they're buying the ticket from the Upper East Side of New York. They've got more money than if it's uh, down in the Lower East Side. Ah, oh, no, it's Quest. He always buys that sort of ticket. Therefore, we know it's very likely he'll buy that sort of ticket again. Um, is it technically possible? Yes, it is technically possible. It's quite, it's not difficult at all to do. The problem becomes, again, like we were talking about consumer backlash and uh, the regulatory authorities, right? Because if everybody, if all of the airlines start doing personalized pricing, which is what you're referring to, uh, then the chances of collusion increase radically. And that's a risk that I would imagine most airlines are not willing to take. So is, is it possible? Yes. Um, are they going to do it? That's that's a very different question. It's more you of know, a airline pricing is both the most sophisticated and least sophisticated at the same time. Because as you say, the moment the plane takes off, it's like you know, at, at least with old fruit and veg, you can make soup. Once that plane's taken off, it's a worthless uh, it, it's a worthless seat. But I wonder the nirvana for the airline is to predict exactly what they can sell and to whom. It is. It is for not just the airline, for any business who's selling anything, right? Um, if you can say that this person is going to is willing to pay a thousand and this other person is willing to pay six hundred, then it's the best to, to be able to charge the person thousand and the other person six hundred rather than charging both six hundred. Um, and if you really think about it, like at the in kind of the ancient time markets that existed, <laughs> that's what yeah. they would be doing. You know, you've got the carpet sellers. They look at the person and they kind of figure out that we can charge them more money because they're richer right. or whatever. Let's, um, put, the, let's go, let's go to brass. Let's go to the basics here. At the end of the day, as the consumer, are we going to get screwed with this? 
<laughs> um, it's right now just too early to tell. Um, I would say that there they have the ability to make some very strategic decreases if they really want to. And what I mean by that is, and there's always going to be flights that are going to be less than and you know more on the empty side, right? Like kind of uh, not not as much demand as they expected. In those scenarios, they can strategically decrease prices to kind of give other consumers who wouldn't be taking mm -hmm. that flight that opportunity to take the flight. An example of this is you know free upgrades to business class. That's like a free trial, right? Same kind of thing. Um, they can do that. Let's see if they do it. <laughs> Let's see, indeed, sir. I'm grateful for your time and attention tonight. Thank you for joining us on Quest Thank Business. You.